गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टुडे माय टॉपिक ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन इज द अपवर्ड फिक्सेशन ऑफ पटेला एंड इट्स सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट इन बोवाइन एज ऑल ऑफ यू नो हाउ डज द पटेला फिक्सेस ऑन इट्स फ्रॉम इट्स ओरिजिनल पोजीशन टू द मीडियल ट्रोकेर रिज ऑफ द फीमर as you know upward fixation of patella occurs when medial patella ligament becomes caught over the medial trochlear ridge if it becomes fixed in that position the hind limb cannot be flexed and the animal assumes its a posture with the affected limb extended in a caudally abducted position with the fetlock flexed due to the reciprocal abrators that condition can occur in the cattle buffalo as well as in the horses also some cases are noted in the camels as well the laxity of the patellar ligaments matlab when the patellar ligament they are in the relax position it predisposes the animal to upward fixation of the patella the relax ligaments allow the patella to glide freely on the articular surface of the trochlea the limb is over extended due to muscular cramps or a conformity defect then the patellar apex may get jammed between the trochlear ridge and this will lead to the complete extension of the limb in bovines the condition is economically important as it reduces the market value of the affected animal mostly the working bulls are most affected however the condition can be no, no, noticed in the cause with the debilitating conditions the occurrence of the upward patellar fixation is lowest in summer season and it was highest in the winter the lameness immediately after the rest is the most typical of the symptoms shown by the animals now what is the sir before you we go for the, uh, this uh, cure of this uh, disease condition that is upward of we must know the uh, anatomy of this staffel joint this staffel joint consists of two separate joints that is uh, one is the femoro patella that is between the femur and the patella and another joint is the femoro tibial joint the trochlea is bounded by two oblique ridges medial and the lateral one uh, uh, as all of you know patella is a large sesamoid bone which develops in the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle and there are three patellar ligaments medial middle and lateral which are the continuations of the fibrous bands of the quadriceps muscles to the cranial tibial tuberosity the next slide i will show to the topography of the staffel joint the medial patellar ligament is thick and strong as compared to the other two ligaments the medial one is widely separated from the two that is the middle patellar ligament at both the ends the lateral patellar ligament is flat and lies close to the middle ligament at both the extremities now here you can see the anatomy this is femur bone and this portion showing this is the patella patella on which three ligaments this is one a b and c this b is the l one c is the lateral one and this separated from the two ligaments that is this one a one is the medial patellar ligament and the at this small a point we give usually give a niche to cut this ligament at this d one is the collateral trochlear ligament and the this one is the i i1 is the fibrosity of the tibia and here this g portion this is all this is the patella this is the trochlear ridge and this picture is also shown here the medial tibial fibrosity in the another picture colored picture you can definitely see the different the uh, patella ligaments this this one this one this one is the lateral one this one is the middle one and between the middle and the medial there is a formation of the triangle this condition may be unilateral or bilateral means both the hind leg may be involved or the only the one hind leg then it may be involved in most of the cases one of the hind leg is affected more of the less it has been often observed that if unaffected limb is not operated then it may start exhibiting the signs of some days or 
month so it's always advisable to operate on both the sides when if only one limb is showing mild or you know, no symptoms at this time no surgery this is the unilateral case if the both legs are involved the conditions become bilateral what is the major potential factors for patellar fixation some nutritional deficiencies may also lead to the condition that is upward fixation of patella some exploitation activities external traumas some breeds and breeds are mostly affected the survey has shown the research has shown that some specific breeds may show the size although the condition may can be noticed in any species or any breed morphological changes of the medial trochlear is also predisposes the animals to the patellar fixation occupational trauma especially in the working bull box is or the condition can be has been noted in the adult animals only however some younger animals can also be affected climatic conditions agree with the signs in the winter month this is the research showing the seasonal variation in in the dry cases mostly the cases has been seen that is you can see 233 cases were noted in the dry season as compared to the 76 out of 309 cases this uh, this table shows the uh, different stages stages of the pregnancy calving at different levels this is the average age that is only the adult animals are affected most so what are the clinical signs and the diagnosis the hind limbs gets locked in extension the condition may leave itself or may remain locked for several hours backing and moving in right circle activates the condition Uh, the signs uh, palpation can be done when the limb is locked in extension it reveals the tense patellar ligaments and that the patella is locked above the medial trochlear ridge of the femur the animal drags the front of the hoof when is forced to move with the locked hoof the fetal limb is brought forward with a jerky flexion on every step in some animals the symptoms are so severe due to complete extension of the limbs that they are unable to move Palpation of the trochlea relieves the absence of the patella in its original position and great tenses of the medial patella ligament. And this is the picture showing how to diagnose the condition in the standing position by the palpation of the patella ligaments, tibia tuberosity, and the patella. Now, what's the treatment? Treatment medial patella ligament in stifle joint has surgical importance for the medial patella desmosis during. forward patellar fixation in bovines most common and only successful treatment to correct upward fixation of patella is the medial patellar desmotion and means mpd it gives the 100% cure and it can be done by open or closed methods for mpd usually we go for stab close or blind method is preferred because of the little or no hemorrhage no suturing rapid healing and also less posterity operative complication in some cases of blind method two or more attempts to sever the medial patellar ligaments are required for complete resection of this ligament many a times the remnants of ligaments may be there so second attempt or the even third attempt may be required to go for the complete resection of this medial patellar ligament in a blind method it's very important to identify the medial patellar ligament which of course not a easy task especially in buffaloes which has a lot of adipose tissue so moreover the knowledge of topographic anatomy of this ligament is important although in affected animals the medial patellar ligament becomes very thick hard and less elastic so crushing sound followed by the immediate relief of the characteristic jerky flexions during progression is the indication of a successful medial patellar desmotion now how, how what is the procedure for closed method the animal is restrained in later recumbency with the affected limb towards the ground and the upper unaffected limb is drawn forward and tied with the fore limbs the limb to be operated should be extended backward with the traction and should be held in position by a rope or either manually or by some picket the tibia femoris patellar articulation area should be aseptic aseptically prepared for surgery this is the staining of the calf for mpd and in this picture you can notice that the factor limb is stained on the ground side 
and unaffected neck is tied with the four limbs and the affected limb is extended in the full so that you can palpate the uh, patellar ligament by medial tibial tuberosity and the gap between the medial and the middle ligament is approached and shaving of that a particular area is done and the local analgesia is achieved by infiltrating about 5 ml of 2% signocaine hydroxide into the gap located between the tibial crest and the medial and the middle patellar ligament non cooperative animals can can be sedated by using the xylazine at the dose rate of 0.0.01 mg per kg body weight this is the infiltration of the local anesthesia at the gap between the on the medial aspect of the cervical joint the site is located by index finger moving upward along the cranial border of the tibia till cranial tibia tuberosity is reached Middle ligament is traced as a broad, broad crest and thickest among the three pedal ligament. This is the landmark, and the finger is slipped inward at the level of medial condyle of tibia into the groove between the middle and the medial ligaments. The medial ligament is felt as a prominent part, and to apply close, close technique of the medial pedal dystomy, a small stab incision is made by a blade, and the medial pedal ligament is sweared by. Bistri or curved blade means eleven blade number eleven or twelve can be used. Then the animal is allowed to walk to identify the successful medial pedal dismount. The open method, uh, if the animal is non-cooperative, you can sedate it by using xylazine hydrochloride at the dose rate of 0.01 mg per kg body weight intramuscular. And although the local anesthesia has to be achieved by using two percent pycnocaine hydrochloride. Sustained animal, sustained the animal in, with the rope in the lateral recumbency with the factor limb downward, as in case of loss. Where the site is typically, this is how the animal is prepared for aseptical surgery by giving a three centimeter linear incision, which was made on lateral to the medial patellar ligament near its insertion on the tibial tuberosity. This is the artificial was used to bluntly dissect the fascia from underneath the medial patellar ligament, and with the help of forceps, the medial patellar ligament was exteriorized. This is the cutting of horizontal insertion of the medial ligament. Here is insertion by giving it a lift on the medial patellar ligament. So after cutting the medial patellar ligament, you will have only have to oppose the skin as is by using the nylon. This is the. You can also perform the surgery in standing animal if the animal is cooperative. You can go for the same procedure. You can feel the cranial tibial tuberosity and the medial tibial tuberosity and the gap between the middle and the medial, and you can give a leech by using the bistri blade in standing position. This technique can be performed only in cooperative animals where the other does not adhere in performing this. Now, what is the post-operative care? The possibility in usually we don't require post-operative care in the closed method, but if you are doing it by open method, then you can go for a course of antibiotics for two to three days or three to five days, and also you can do analgesic. Regular antiseptic testing of the wound is advised, and also you can give some anti anti fly anti maggot to avoid the maggot infestation. Thank you very much.